when I saw this movie, I was expecting at the end to get that sort of thing that says, like, what happened in the re in real life, you know? Because it felt like a sort of story that felt so bizarre and kind of odd that it felt like it had to be real. But it's obviously a fictional idea. So, so where did this sort of idea spawn, spawn from, from you? Well, it's a fictional story, but it's based on, on true facts of people trying to gain a single millisecond off, uh, off of their, the time of the transactions in the, in the financial uh, market. So I wanted, I wanted to address the madness of our financial system and then uh, I couldn't find a visual compelling way to do it until I started researching and found all of these people that were doing something, things that were very massive and physical. <clears throat> and I decided to, do th uh, to choose the ones who, would do, who were working on fiber, fiber optic tunnels. So the premise came about that way. This is like these two cousins who have a genuine desire to beat the stock market by building a 1,000 mile long mad tunnel f across the US. Uh, and because, Jesse, I was reading that you memorized the screenplay before getting involved in this. Is that something you, you usually do? And if not, what was it about this particular project that, that made you feel compelled to, to take that approach? Oh, well, uh, movies almost never required that much memorization because most scenes are such, you know, kind of short dialogue scenes. But, um, uh, Kim is a great writer, even though English is actually his second language, right? And um, he wrote uh, like more dialogue, at least for my character, than I've ever had in anything. And so um, just wanted to make sure that my character spoke as quickly as possible and um, as convincingly as possible, because um, he's kind of a manipulative hustler. And uh, you know, people like that don't take, you know, they they don't have they they can't expose their own vulnerability uh, while trying to kind of uh, gain something. Um, and so, uh, so it just seemed like the kind of character that would speak a mile a minute, which I can do, but only if I know what I'm going to say in advance. Because <laughs> I, I mean, you also did something pretty remarkable. You made Alexander Skarsgård look like a regular, normal person like anyone, anyone else. Because, I mean, he's Tarzan, you know. Um, and I was just wondering, what, 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 I mean, his, what was the idea behind his casting? Because he wouldn't, I, he wouldn't be the first actor that springs to mind for that role, particularly from an aesthetic sort of point of view, but he's sort of brilliant in, in, the, in, the, perfor in the performance. Oh, well, I'll tell him that. Uh, the idea I had seen, uh, I was uh, interested in seeing what Alexander could do in this film when I saw him play in the Suicide Diaries, which is like, for me, it was really a memorable, per memorable performance, and I didn't even know it was him. So I knew he wanted, I knew he could go the, uh, really far and broad beyond what his, you know, usual character is, and he also wanted to go that way. Um, what I loved about uh, his stature was that. As we started working together, we realized that there was this this like kind of of mice and men metaphor that was that grew out of it. And uh, yeah, I think that Alexander was a was a soldier in a way of really going all the way. Because fact is, when we started discussing about his total transformation, especially his hair, uh, it's it's true that our investors were kind of worried. No, 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 don't do this to our Alexander. And uh, yeah, it, it, he he really, really was courageous in that sense. Uh, it might just be because I revisited the social network recently, but it's, it feels like there's these these characters. There, there's, there is a slight um, uh, similarity, I think, between them in the sense that I think they're they're people that are always thinking slightly ahead of the curve. They're people that mm -hmm. are always and they will go to any means to kind of get what they want. I was like, yeah. are you one of the, are you? Quite, is there any similarities to you in real life in a sense? Are you one of those people that's always thinking up new ideas? Or are you one of those people that's constantly, particularly from are the network? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have like. I mean, my ambitions are not. Uh, my ambitions are are in such a different area. My ambitions are to, I, I like, you know, want to get a, a humor essay in the New Yorker magazine, you know, or on the internet for it. You know, so like, my ambitions are not to make, you know, billions of dollars, you know, from in the, in these kind of, you know, huge industrial marketplaces. So, um, so, but I have, but, but the feelings are all the same. You know, you're, in the same way my character in this movie is kind of like, you know, uh, you know, staying up all night to tweak, you know, millit, you know, millisecond off of a of, of an equation. Um, you know, I'm up all night trying to fix my humor essay or something like that. So, uh, you know, the feeling is the same. And when you're acting, you're kind of trying to figure out, well, what is similar to this character, even though I would never do something like this, and my character would probably never do anything like I'm doing. And uh, luckily, you know, the characters in this movie are passionate and dramatic people, so you can kind of almost project any part of yourself onto these characters and it, it, it's uh, kind of inspiring. And I, I, I found the movie to be really funny as well. There's so many moments where I sort of laughed. I mean, how vital are they in a movie like this to have those moments of light relief in there and those little kind of quirky elements that, that alleviate some of the, the more sort of, the bigger sort of themes I suppose at play? 
Um, it's a, it's my answer is a little bit off track, but as you as I do films, you realize that you, like you think that you'll be get more and more comfortable doing films, and it's actually the contrary because you know how little how little things can make the film go like on the wrong path. And tone is one of my you know the obsessions I think of any director like keeping a straight line about the tone and this how the film balances between levity and drama for this film. It's one of the, I find it's one of the scariest, biggest challenges, and it was one of the biggest challenges for this film. You want to make sure that uh, uh, the levity feeds the drama and the drama feeds the, the levity. So uh, I hope that people uh, really uh, appreciate that. But definitely when I was speaking with, uh, with Jesse and both Ale uh, Jesse and Alexander, they were like, uh, I feel there could be some levity in this film. Are you, do you agree? I just, you, didn't, you know, they just wanted to validate the, the, the essence of that. And we, I think that with working with Jesse and, and Alex, there really was something that came out that was that the film in the end has much more levity than uh, the original script, I would say. And also going back to when you were saying you were sort of, you'd be up with sort of tweaking little aspects of, of your essays and obviously to do with films as well. Uh, it sounds like you mentioned that Salma would, would call you up in the middle of the night with questions about the character. You must love that commitment from your actors. When you've got those people that are putting that much effort and the, the fact that, you know, you're getting phone calls from your, your cast in the middle of the night, is, is such, it must be such a sort of a great thing, I guess, for a director. Yeah. Or even if it does keep you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't mind being woke up by Salma. It's okay. But uh, it's, the truth is, you know, uh, the people who have international recognition, like Jesse and like Salma, don't. I, you realize quickly that they're not there just because they have raw talents, because they really work hard at it as well. And they're, uh, you know, they, they're any character that they're playing, they want to make sure that they, they're really sculpting it to uh, as deep as as they can. You know, so they really, everybody put a lot of effort in in building their characters. And yeah, absolutely, it's like it's great to have that that input. Mm -hmm. And then just finally, uh, Jesse, you've got two big sort of sequels coming up that I'm sort of can't not, very excited about, can't not sort of mention. Obviously, this, well, stepping back into the world of Zombieland, uh, I'm just wondering how excited you are about, about that one. And then a question you'll probably have, you're not even allowed to answer is obviously the Justice League sequel. Just wondering what fans can expect from Lex Luthor in that, in that production. Oh, I have no idea about that, actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, the Zombieland movie, we start like in um, like three months or something. And uh, yeah, it's great. They wrote like probably a dozen scripts over the last... 10 years, um, and I would like finally got it right, which is why everybody wanted to do it, like, because um, it was like a movie that's not only popular, but kind of like, everybody worked on it, really loved it, and so you wanted to make sure it was, you know, equally good. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for your time, Thanks you. a lot. Thank very much. Cheers. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.